Hey fellas, Brad Ween here, and as you can see, I just rolled my ass out of bed. But how about UFC 129? Wasn't that the greatest, spectacular event you've ever seen in your life? Maybe, maybe for some, but you got to admit, those 55,000 people, that place was electrifying. But uh, UFC 130, Edgar versus Maynard 3, is in a couple of weeks on May 28th at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, it looks like it's going to be an awesome card. I'm going to be talking to you about uh, my predictions on the main card. So it looks like for the main card we have uh, Rick Story versus Tiago Alves, Frank Mir versus Big Country Roy Nelson, Quentin Rampage Jackson against Matt Hamill, and for the UFC Lightweight Championship we got Frankie Edgar against Gray Maynard. So I'm going to talk about the main card and what I think the outcome is going to be. So <clears throat> first up we have... Rick Story against Tiago Alves. You know, Tiago Alves came off that really lackluster loss against um, John Fitch. And Rick Story just came off that, you know, pretty impressive win against Johnny Hendricks. <clears throat> A lot of people say, you know, in the Johnny Hendricks fight, um, it could have gone either way, but, you know, I gave it to Rick Story. You know, he worked the ground a lot more. Um, Tiago Alves, you know, I think this is going to be his, um, I want to say, um, revamp fight you know what I mean like he's gonna this he needs to win this fight you know he's in trouble uh, but so uh, you know Rick Story's good he's all around good so is Tiago but um, I found this fight's gonna be on the ground a lot <clears throat> but you know when it comes down to that you gotta give it to Tiago he's just you know he's that much stronger you know he's hungry he's gonna have to go out there and he needs he needs this win so, uh, but, but all of this, to, you know, to Rick Story, you know, he's good too. But uh, I, I just think Tiago is uh, physically too strong for him to handle. And I think Tiago is going to roll away with it. I'm going to say uh, second round TKO, you're going to see, you know, Tiago come out hungry again, like he was against Matt Hughes. Next up, we got Frank Mir and Big Country Roy Nelson. Now, this is a very, you know, exciting fight because these guys have actually met before, but not in the octagon in the ring. They met in a jiu-jitsu competition and, uh, or grappling competition, whichever. And Roy Allison actually beat him. And uh, that was pretty impressive, you know. Everybody's like, oh, but Roy Nelson's just a big fat guy. But Roy Nelson has a great ground game that we barely get to see because he has such good stand-up. Um, you know, Frank Mir just came off that win. You know, he's been on a little bit of a tear lately. <clears throat> and Roy Nelson just came off that loss against um, uh, Junior Dos Santos, which was a tough fight. Like, Mir came off that, <clears throat> excuse me, he came off that win against Crow Cop, which was kind of bummer to see. You know, I love Crow Cop, but, you know, I think he, at his time, is ready to retire. He, you know, he's done his duties, he's won his championships. But enough about Crow Cop. Back to the fight against Mir and Roy Nelson. Um, this is going to be interesting. I think they're going to stand up and trade. And, you know, Frank Mayer has been showing that his stand-up's greatly improved. And as you can see against Shet Congo, how he rocked him big time. And, I don't know, you know, Roy Country, Roy Country, big country Roy Nelson, he, he's, 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 a good, he's just all around good. And, you know, his wins over, you know, noticeably Stefan Struve, you know, he was 6'11". If you guys watch that fight, oh my God, there was such a size difference. It just shows you that it doesn't matter, excuse me, for Roy. He'll, he'll go in, he'll fight. And I was really excited when he was on the Ultimate Fighter because, you know, he was my pick to win. When I saw Roy Nelson, I was like, done deal. Excuse me. You know, Roy's got a good jits. He's got good striking. He's going to win this fight. And he, he, he utilizes his jits because he's so... He's so, I don't want to say he's fat, because he is, but he's still solid. But he's got so much upper body strength because of his belly that he'll pin you down. And it's, I can only imagine what it's like trying to get him off. But Mir, you know, he's also a big boy too. You know, he's not, he's also very fit. You know, he's strong. I don't know. I think they're going to trade in this. And I, uh, one of them's going to get rocked. One of them's going to go down. And one of them's going to try to... I think because their egos are so big with their jujitsu, they're gonna to try to see who can jujits who can jujits the other person out. And I think it's gonna be a big heavyweight rolling match. 
So, uh, this is going to be a tough one. You know, I have to go with my gut. I got to, you know, Frank Mayer, he's, I think, I think Roy Nelson's going to pull this out of the woodwork. I think he's going to, I think he's, I actually think he's going to rock Mayer and Mayer's going to go down or whatnot, or he's, you know, Roy Nelson's going to somehow get him down. And Roy Nelson's just going to lay on him and just wear him out, you know, just pound him, just lay on his big belly on him. I'm going to have to say Roy Nelson, unanimous decision by uh, Big Belly, lay and pray. And that's it. Next up, we got Quentin Rampage Jackson against Matt Hamill. Now, this is it's going to be... This is going to be a good fight. You know, I love Quentin. I think he's awesome. I, th I was so happy when he won against Vichita, even though apparently everybody there was upset. And uh, Matt Hamill, you know, he's he's one of my all-time favorites. You know, you got to give it to the guy. He's deaf, and he's he's so good. He just, he, you know, he had that one against Tito last October, which, you know, it, w it was really impressive. You know, he it was just... To overcome, you know, beating Tito. I know Tito, people are saying, you know, he's kind of washed up. But beating Tito is like, you know, I don't want to stay a like stepping stone, but it's like an honor. I don't know. Being a pioneer in the sport, even though it's just something that you can say, you know. And with Matt Hamill, you know, coming off that, you know, I think he came out, yeah, John Jones, how he just got uh, dummied. But he also had, you know, a tough win against Keith Jardine, and that was after he lost against John Jones. And, uh, you know, Matt's going to do what he usually does. He's going to he's gonna try to box him. He's going to try to wrestle him. And Quentin, you know, he's he's tough. I don't know how this is going to play. I think, you know, Hamill's going to try to take him down. I don't know. I I think this is going to be Hamill's going to try to take him down. He might succeed every now and then, but Rampage is tough, you know. And Rashad fight. Rashad took him down a couple times. And Rashad's a good wrestler. He's really good. But I think Matt Hamill has the best wrestling, you know, next to Ryan Bader. But I don't know. I think Matt Hamill's wrestling is better than Bader's. So I'm kind of stuck on this one. Hmm. Quentin's just so raw and strong, you know. He's coming off a real confident win against you know Leo Machida. This might be tough, but uh, man, mm -mm -mm. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to get, give it to Matt Hamill. You know, I think he's he's gonna stick to his game plan, and you know he's gonna box with him. And if it's if, you know if he finds out he's not winning the boxing match, he's gonna just take Quentin down. Quentin's gonna throw a shot, and Mass is gonna get him down. And I think Mass is gonna hammer him. And hammer Hamill. I think he's just gonna hammer uh, Quentin Rampage, but that that was a tough one. Like the only way I could see Quentin really winning is uh, if like uh, he had a, if he has a great fight like he did against Dan Henderson. Holy shit, that was such an awesome fight. If he utilizes his own wrestling, you know, against Matt Hamill, he might have a chance. But I think he knows what kind of wrestler Matt Hamill is. You know, I'm not giving anything bad to Hendo, but you know, ha Hamill's. Wrestling so much better better than Hendo's. A lot of H's. And uh, so Quinton's got to go in there realizing, you know, he's going against a superior wrestler and he's got to have that mental, you know, game plan in. So he's going to try to, you know, work the jab. I think he's going to try to, you know, work his boxing. But his team's got to be prepared for Mount Hamill taking him down, you know. You know, I think, you know, Wolf Lair, they're good. You know, he's, I, I, he's just got to make sure that, you know, they have the game plan that he's going to be taken down because he he will be getting taken down. But I have to give it to Hamill. I think Hamill's going to out-wrestle it, you know, out-wrestle. He's just out-wrestle the whole division, you know. And uh, i got to give it to Hamill. I'm going to give it to him. Yamis decision. Hamill. You know what? I'm going to do split because I think Quentin's going to try to – Quentin's going to change it up. Because you gotta give a crafty veteran, you know, that chance. I'm gonna say Matt Hamill split decision. That's it. Now we have the title fight for the lightweight championship: Edgar against Maynard. And the last fight was bullshit. How they went to a draw. You know, I can't believe Fra Frankie Edgar got out of that first round. If you guys watched the the second fight, 
Oh, Maynard had him on the ropes in the first round. Like, he was bopping his ass. Oh, my God. Oh, I love Frank Yeager and I love Gray Maynard. This is going to be a tough fight. I don't know. I don't want to say it's going to go to a draw because the first, it's just my luck. You know, I, I thought that BJ Penn was going to be John Fitch, but somehow that went to a draw. But, I don't know. This fight, I think this is going to be an overall brawl. You know, both guys are going to get their shots in. I think both guys are going to get their asses rocked again, like in the first, second fight. You know, these guys have obviously evolved from their first fight and obviously showed in the second, and it's just going to be better in the third. You know, they, they know what to expect, but it also has the downside of being a boring fight because they know what to expect now, you know, because the first time they fought was like a couple years ago, and on this time they fought, it's a couple months. But, you know, it's either going to be an all brawl like the second fight or it's going to be a boring-ass title fight. Like, it's going to be... Stand up, trade, back away. Or it's going to be one bite takes the other guy down, pounds a bit, gets back up because of stalemate. But they don't call them the lightweights because they're boring. These guys are exciting fighters. And I got to give it, you know, you always got to give the edge to the champ. Even though Maynard has beaten Edgar, you know, Edgar is a totally different fighter now. He's got so much confidence going on him. Even though know, beating BJ twice in a row with like dominant performances. So, I have to give it to Frankie Edgar, you know, he's, you know, the champ for a reason, so, that's my predictions for UFC 130, Frankie Edgar is going to retain the title, and, you know, they got to set up the fight with uh, Pettis, if he wins his fight, which he probably will, because that man is unbelievable, but, those are my predictions for UFC 130, May 28th, be sure to check it out, folks, see ya.